Guess what came in the mail today? Bam, 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 bam. It's a dome and your face is gay. Bam, 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 bam. I also ordered transparent tubing that is more flexible, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it's stiff enough, but it also it flexes like this, and it was packed uh, in shipping such that it created these kinks. Now I need to get a heat gun or something and make them round again because right now they're kind of oval shaped. But you can see this will give us a better view of the hamster and it will be able to bend down to the lower habitat without me stacking it on top of something because this one is too short. It's too short. It's a habitat lit compared to this one because of the different height of the ballast containers. Uh, I just need to mount this here and see whether or not the seal is good enough uh, after the fact. How am I going to make the hole, you ask? <laughs> it's a hole saw. Well, here goes nothing. Wow, that went a lot better than expected. Okay, so I need to do some sanding around the hole because it's still really rough, but I couldn't wait. Check this out. How cool is that? I'm really warming up to it. Originally, I was just disappointed when I got this in the mail that the lid wasn't clear, and all I could think of was how do I make it as close to that as possible. But if you go and look at screenshots from Bioshock and go replay the game, the entire structure of Rapture was not transparent. They had these overhead skylights that were either domes or hemicylinders, and this is really going to recapture the feel of that. It's also going to make it look more like an underwater habitat than just a submerged, mostly transparent box. The nice thing about having a lid that's not fully transparent is that there's this opaque space that I can mount electronics and cabling for the LED lights. I can mount the webcam here. There's all the space that I can put shit and it won't look ugly from the outside because it won't be visible except from certain angles. Now I'm almost tempted to add a dome to this habitat too because it would, it would just barely fit. But it would also, I feel, look kind of stupid because the lid of this is already transparent. So you'd be able to see the O-ring, you'd be able to see the bolts and everything and it doesn't really serve any purpose since the ceiling is already transparent. I've just, I've just got dome fever, man. First it was tubes, but now it's domes. <laughs> Yes, yes, bueno. Look how much better that looks. You can see clearly. This will give us a much better view than the old tunnel would. And this actually is flexible enough that we can have the habitats at different heights. I think with a heat gun I can actually permanently shape this so it goes like like that. So there's less stress at these points. But I think this is this is going to be fine. I had to put the purging point down here because of the incline. The water is going to to go down to the lowest point. So it's a little bit wonky, but for this particular tube that was the right answer. I've also got this conduit. More tubes! Um, it'll protect and bundle up the data, power, and airline connections to the surface into a single nicely shielded umbilical. And I hear you asking, why not one larger diameter umbilical for all of the habitats? And the answer to that is, that prevents me from bringing the modules up individually as needed. Each of them has to have their own umbilical, but I can at least consolidate the air hose, the USB cable, and the power cable from each habitat into a single, neatly uh, combined umbilical this way. No? All right. Oh, I should have vacuumed this first. Shit. You can see him so much better, though. Like, in the old one, at least natural light could make it through. And you could kind of tell where he was in it, but in this one you get a complete unobstructed view. of the underwater hamsterage and the fucking sweet ass 
submerged tube action. I dropped some money on a tripod. A bunch of you specifically requested it, and you gotta give the people what they want. So now you can watch me working. I just have this on here as a guide. I'm gonna have to remove it in a minute to get all the plastic shavings up from in between. Just making sure all the holes are exactly correctly placed. It's also why I pinned it in place first with these two to make sure that it wasn't skewed to one side because the hole is almost but not exactly the, the same diameter as the base of the dome. It shouldn't make a difference. I mean, I've got it, I've got it almost perfectly aligned, uh, enough for my liking. This lid is thick with two C's. Go in there. And adequate. Although, because of these ribs, I'm gonna have to either get longer bolts for these two holes or shave this part down so that the nut will reach. Because these are just exactly long enough. Well, that's, that's the dome sorted, except for these two screws here and here. I'll have to figure out what to do about that, because these raised plastic pieces prevent them from reaching all the way through. Um, I've had the drill slip a couple times and nick the dome in a couple places. That's going to drive me crazy, even though you can't even see it on video. Just because I know the nicks are there. But that was always going to happen. I'm, you can't just buy a new dome every time it gets a scratch. It's going to get scratched up just in the course of being used. There we go. Dremel that shit. Now, as with any significant hole penetration giggity, we're going to apply just a little bit of silicone sealant around the rim here to create a watertight seal. It doesn't take a lot because it's going to be pressed very thin. And of course, this is just a Q-tip of the type that we've all used at one point in our lives or another to just jam into our urethras in order to get the fire ants out because we tried one of those viral challenges. Smear it on there slowly and gently as you would with a beautiful lady that you are trying to make watertight. Do not touch the dome directly when working with silicone because you don't want permanent fingerprints on it. There's likely to be some silicone on your fingers. Listen to me talking about this as if anybody else is going to ever build one of these. I, I guess you never know. I guess it, this is also as good a time as any to talk about the new merch. If you didn't see it on my Twitter or on the Patreon, there's t-shirts now. You guys have been clamoring for merch, and I dragged my feet for a long time trying to figure out the best way to go about it. I eventually went with Teespring because of their YouTube integration. You can see the shirts on the merch shelf below this video, hopefully, if everything goes according to plan. And there are two designs, which I'll put up on screen now, done by very talented followers of mine who cut me excellent deals on the price for their artwork. I didn't just want to take it for free, but I also couldn't afford to pay very much. Uh, artists need to eat too, so you, know, you need to pay them. But despite the fact that my Patreon is over $1,000, after you subtract all the shit for photography and all the com habitat components I'm constantly buying, there's really not that much to live on. And if I were still working, I would not be able to put these videos out at the rate of one per week. So that doesn't leave very much money behind to pay exorbitant sums for our work. I wish that were not the case. But check out the shirts. Uh, that's another way you can support me and get something really cool. In return, uh, a conversation starter, certainly, that will possibly get you committed to a mental institution along with me. We'll be cellmates. There it is from the underside with the silicone applied. I uh, just have to let it dry now. 
I'm feeling pretty good about this. This went about as well as I could have possibly asked for. That looks beautiful. That's exactly how it looked in my dream. At least I think so. There were a lot of boobs. It was hard to see past all the boobs, but behind them somewhere was a dome that looked exactly like that. Here is another example of recent project spending. A shelving unit so I can collect all of the Hampshire related stuff in one place, organize it and get it up off the floor. Uh, that way I can live like a civilized person instead of a wild animal. 85 goddamn dollars. Can you believe that? Just goes to show there's a lot of little ancillary costs to this project you wouldn't normally think about. It doesn't occur to you that you're going to need shit like this in order to build an underwater hamster city. I really appreciate every penny you guys give me, though. And I've noticed, maybe I'm reading too much into things, but I've noticed that whenever my Patreon dips too low because people withdraw, that an equal number of people pledge and, and bring it back up to where it was. I don't know if you guys are doing that deliberately. I'd prefer to think that you are. Just because you have my back and and, uh, and care. Because uh, that warms the wee cockles of my cold, dead heart.